Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 5. Here we are with a good solution to the issue that happened last night. A North Dakota town is breathing a sigh of relief tonight after a sixth grader reported missing last night is back with his family. Good evening and thank you for joining us tonight. The Lisbon Police Department, family members and even the school got involved to help find 12-year-old Dallas Clausen. Valley News Team's Cornelius Hawker is in Lisbon with reaction from those people who all say if this happens in your community, you should work with law enforcement to help bring a happy ending like this one. We see our kids as our own, so knowing that he's been found, that's a huge relief to all the staff and even the students because there's been whispers throughout the day. Lisbon Middle School Principal Warren Michaels says the whole town was ready to step up to help find Dallas Clausen when it came out he was missing Tuesday night. Everybody in this community is friends and they treat each other as family. Chief Jeanette Person says the tips and leads started pouring in when she began asking questions. Checking all the details from the friends and following up on that throughout the night and this morning and hoping that he would return to school this morning and he did not. Chief Person says they went back and did more interviews with Dallas's friends, which led them to finding him today. He's safe, he's, he's fine, and he has returned home. Dallas's mom, Melanie Skarmahorn, says she's forever grateful to Chief Persons, Ransom County Sheriff Benoist, and our son's principal, Warren Michael, for all their help in finding her son. And as for our son, she says Dallas is doing well, a little scared and embarrassed that the police got involved in the situation, but overall, he's home and he's happy and he's healthy. Reporting from Lisbon, North Dakota, Cornelius Hawker, Valley News Live. Chief Person says they aren't saying where they found the boy, just that he was still in the Lisbon area and his disappearance didn't involve any type of criminal activity. The family of a Fargo man says he died Sunday of the West Nile virus. 76-year-old Arnold Esterby was admitted to the hospital after having flu-like symptoms. He suddenly died five days later at the downtown Stanford Hospital from what doctors say was West Nile. Family and co-workers of Esther B. tell us they feel called to share the dangers about the virus. Seeing what happened with, with Arnie and how quickly that moved through um, taking him from where he was pretty much normal a week ago and to not being with us anymore, how quickly that can happen, um, I think we need to raise awareness for that. Coming up tonight at 6, we hear exclusively from Arnold's family and the message they want to get out about West Nile in the Fargo area. Some pretty nice weather out there today, sunshine and comfortable temps. We know at least one group of people taking advantage of the nice weather, and they're at a backyard barbecue in Moorhead with Hutch Johnson. Hutch, what's it like out there? We're closing out the Cashwise Backyard Barbecue season in style. I have sunshine on my shoulders, and that's the way most of us are enjoying the weather tonight. There are a few clouds, though, as we take a look at the satellite and radar. Out in the west, we've had spotty showers and even some rumbles of thunder throughout the afternoon. This is reaching into Benson County right now near the Maddox area, but most of the thunder is to your west, so clouds and a few sprinkles for our western counties this evening, and that's where this should stay. I think we stay quiet as we go through the evening. Again, Maddox to Harvey in Wells County is where we have the best chance at some soggy showers this evening. Here's your planner for Fargo-Moorhead, a temperature of 76 in the 7 o'clock hour. Light winds and blue skies as we go toward the later evening. The sun will descend, that's for sure, and we'll see temperatures Oh, dropping into the upper 60s. Hey, we have to always have a, a, a end of the book or whatever, and this year we're at Buck Driscoll's house. Buck, we're having a good time here, and we're, where did you sign up to win, Buck? What did Cash wise. Cash wise. That's very good. Who'd you invite all these happy people? Me and you. Yep. Jill. Yep, Jill. Okay. Jill. Joe. Yep, Joel, uh, me, Kathy, Kathy, you, me. yep, Sandy. The gang is yeah. all here. And we yeah. are okay. I got one more question for you. Do you like steak, Buck? I like steak. I like steak too. All right. Our friends from Cashwise are at the grill, and make sure you don't change that channel because coming up in the main weather segment, we are going to draw a name out of the barrel to see who wins the Weber Grill. So we'll do that here in just a bit. That would be Buck, good, huh? Buck. Yeah. All right. Back to you guys in the studio. Thanks, Hutch. 
Today is International Overdose Awareness Day, and this afternoon, Regroup, a local organization that brings recovery people together, took their campaign to Island Park in Fargo. It's called the Fed Up Rally, and it's a call for immediate action to end the epidemic of drug addiction and overdose deaths. Today's event featured a variety of local speakers, including family members who lost loved ones to addiction. 120 pairs of shoes were strung up to show the number of overdoses that happen nationally every day. We want people to um, have some understanding so that we can come to solutions. And the purpose of our rally here today is to hopefully help remove some of the stigma associated with addiction. We get people talking um, and it will help, hopefully help to remove some of that so we can get people into recovery. After the rally, a walk of remembrance on the Veterans Memorial Bridge. For more information on the Fed Up rally, head to valleynewslive.com and click on the hot button. And coming up tonight on Valley News Live at 6, there's a drug called CBD. It's a compound in marijuana that won't get you high, and it's legal. We'll tell you how one woman hopes this drug will be the first step toward helping people. A possible racial slur against uh, his players has landed a Bemidji State University coach in hot water. Head football coach Jeff Tesh is on leave of absence. Valley News Team's uh, Neil Carlson has details from Bemidji. Jeff Tesh has been a coach at Bemidji State University for 21 years. He's now on the sideline after being put on a leave of absence. The school officials are remaining very hush-hush about this incident. However, I've heard comments that this whole incident may have sprang out of possible racial slurs that Coach Tesh made about a player or players during a practice. School officials will neither confirm or deny it. We've heard comments that the reason all this happened is because Coach Tesh made uh, racial comments toward a player or players uh, during practice. Well, I'm not. Uh, I'm not able to to respond to to that or in any way. I mean, we all we're able to say at this point is that uh, uh, Coach Tesh is on a leave of absence. Is he under investigation by the school or any other entity? There, there um, is a, a, a complaint that is open and pending. Faust says while Coach Tesh is on a leave of absence, he's still employed by BSU. You know, the investigation is underway and you know I don't know what the next steps will be out of that. Faust says he's not sure whether the initial complaint about Coach Tesh was a verbal or written complaint made to a school official. No other details are available at this time. In Bemidji, Neil Carlson, Valley News Live. We reached out to Coach Tesh for comment and his side of the story regarding this incident. He has not responded. Vikings head athletic trainer Eric Sugarman says after undergoing an MRI, it was determined that quarterback Teddy Bridgewater suffered a complete tear to his ACL and has other structural damage. Bridgewater left practice yesterday afternoon by ambulance after he fell to the ground during a non-contact play. The team announced last night that Bridgewater is out for the season. He is expected to make a full recovery. Donald Trump made a visit to Mexico today to hold a meeting with Mexico's president. Some residents of Mexico City said Trump was not welcome. During the presidential campaign, Trump has referred to some of the Mexican community in the United States as rapists and murderers. Trump has also expressed strong support for a wall along the U.S.-Mexican border to deter uh, migrants from crossing into the U.S. illegally. It was an historic flight out of Florida this morning. JetBlue is the first commercial airline in 55 years to fly between the United States and Cuba. The roughly 72-minute flight opens a new era of U.S.-Cuba travel, which was severed during the peak of the Cold War in 1961. Soon, as many as 110 daily flights from 10 airlines will depart the U.S. for Cuba. The restart of commercial travel is seen as one of the most important aspects of President Obama's policy of normalizing relations between Havana and Washington, D.C. You may have noticed something a little different in downtown Fargo last weekend. Extra police officers were patrolling the streets, enforcing a wide variety of ordinances. Here's a list of violations. 26 people were cited for consuming alcohol in public. Seven were cited for urinating in public. There was one possession of marijuana citation, one person was arrested for resisting a police officer, and one minor was cited for entering a liquor establishment. 
The police department says they will continue to have extra patrols in the downtown area, especially on weekends. In about 20 minutes, All True Clinic in Crookston will break ground on an expansion and renovation project. It will add 7,200 square feet to the existing building. It will offer patients more specialty care options like radiology services, mammography, and ultrasounds. The groundbreaking starts at 5.30. It's an expansion not just of the gym, but also of the unique services they offer. TNT Kids Fitness finished its latest project to add a sensory gym, childcare rooms, and more. Their mission is to give children and adults of all abilities a place for physical activity and to develop life skills. In the new sensory gym, employees are able to control the environment and give occupational therapy to kids. Well, the first time the kiddo comes in, sometimes they're like, Oh, this is really cool, but I don't know what's all going on. They get overwhelmed, and by the end, they're, they're going through circuits, and they're loving it, and they're able to transition much, much easier than they were before. To find out more on the services Open Gym or Gymnastics, go to valleynewslive.com and click on our hot button. Coming up this evening on Valley News Live, 10 at 10, the Thief River Falls High School football team has a new team member. Hear how six-year-old Oliver is making a difference for the Prowlers and what these high school athletes have done to include a little boy with Down syndrome. Google is offering up a ride-sharing service, how you can get to your next destination later on Valley News Live at 5. But coming up next, we're live in Moorhead with the boys from Cashwise. We got a big drawing coming up next. You can find out the winner of the Backyard Barbecue Weber Grill right after this.